He won a silver medal at the Olympics. He trained a New Zealander to have a crack at the heavyweight title of the world. And he's back now in the corner with another young New Zealander. Kevin, welcome home. Thanks very much, Murray. Kevin, how did you get involved with Joseph Parker? Oh, long story. You know, I, I got a phone call off Bob Jones actually about two years ago to ask me, have you heard of this young boy, Joseph Parker? And I said, Bob, never heard of him. He said, well, I'll tell you what, you, you should look him up. He said, because I'm going to sponsor him in the lead up to the Olympic Games. I said, really? Because I know that Bob, with as much money as he has, doesn't actually sponsor a lot of fighters. So I thought this kid must be special. And Bob said, I'll tell you what, he's going to become a better pro than he was an amateur. So I started looking at Joseph Parker and I, and I saw he had a fantastic amateur pedigree with successes in many world tournaments. In fact, collectively, he, he could possibly be one of the most very uh, most successful amateur boxers that New Zealand's ever produced. Uh, if, you, if you put all his accomplishments together. So I started looking at him. Bob was supposed to send him over to me prior to the Olympics. And of course, we know what happened yes. there. He missed out in his, the, the final trial and never made the Olympic Games, even though he beat five fighters who went to the Olympics. Right. Um, then after that, Dean Lonergan, who spends a lot of time in Las Vegas and who's a 20-year friend of mine, uh, said to me, you know, I do these fight for life, so I'm going to put Joseph Parker on the fight for life. I said, wow, that's fantastic for a young guy to help launch yep. his, his professional career. And um, so he put him on the fight for life, and three months later, Dean was back over in Vegas, and he said to me, Kev, he said, Dave Higgins and I have decided we're going to get in the boxing business. We're going to try and sign Joseph Parker. I said, really? He said, yeah, we're going to sign him, and if we sign him, we want you to train him. I said, really? I said, OK, well, if you guys sign him, I'll train him. And, that's how, and that, that's how it started. Well, we had Joseph Parker in this program when he was really just what Botha calls him now, baby Joseph. Have a look at this. I was given a chance to go to um, to India to compete in the, in the Commonwealth Championships and um, I was able to get a silver medal there. And then uh, not long after that, I went to um, Azerbaijan. That's somewhere in Russia. I've never ever heard of it. Uh, I tell everyone, they just say that they didn't even know where it is. Right. Yeah, and I was able to get a bronze, and then this was the recent one that we went to Singapore and competed in the... Junior Olympics. Yeah, World Youth Olympics. So he obviously had the goods. What did you see in him, and what do you see in him now? Uh, you know, I watched his early professional fights, and I thought he was, he was making a lot of basic mistakes. He was very much still fighting in, a, in an amateur style. Um, what I have seen develop in, in the last eight, eight weeks is a fighter who uh, is very, very teachable, is a fighter who's very driven, um, is a fighter who is prepared to put it all on the line every day and then eat, sleep, rest and get up and do it again. Like, you know, I was given a quite a difficult job by Dean and Dave. They signed Francois Botha before I came on board. Uh, there was you no, wouldn't have taken this fight, uh, would no, you? No, I've told people straight yeah. out there was a fight that I wouldn't have signed. For, uh, for a five-fight uh, young yep. prospect, not a chance. To fight a fighter of, uh, of Botha's uh, experience. But anyhow, the fight was made. So Some said, of these guys here, you know, they're not going to have taught him half as much as what you've taught him. I don't rate these as great experience fights, do you? Oh, no, no, not at all. These, these were just, uh, like, these were fights to, for Joseph to get three or four fight, um, wins on his record. But, you know, if he was to fight uh, Francois Botha like this, it would be a very difficult night. Right. So, you know, and I explained it all to him, and I began mm -hmm. teaching him and showing him how he should fight. Right. So and how much of a, of, of a step up is the Bortha fight? Oh, it's a big step up. You know, it's a very big step up, but it's, it's a step up that Joseph wanted, wanted to take. He, you know, he liked the fight. Uh, he sat down with, uh, with the Duco boys, Dean and Dave, and said, yeah, make this fight for me. So it's a fight that he liked and he wanted. Well, there, there's Bortha again, Sonny Bill Williams, and you've probably seen footage of that. Uh, several times. Yeah, I would imagine so you'd have studied that closely. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, Bortha can go 10 rounds. Yeah, very durable. Yeah, yeah. Very, very tough, can take a punch at everything. So the strategies that you've worked out, you're really sure that Joseph knows where he's going with this. Well, I tell you what, nothing's really changed throughout the eight weeks as far as strategies go. And what, what I did was I... Uh, through implementing the fight after the first four, four weeks, um, I needed to know whether or not Joseph could take the game plan that I was showing him and the one that he was adopting into a real fight situation. 
um, when he did, and, and, and also he showed me so many things in that fight. He showed me he could relax the day of the fight, what his temperament was going to be like in the dressing room, uh, how our communication was going to be in the corner, and he came through the, that test with flying colours. Since then, we took it up a notch. We've added a lot to it. And he's a much better fighter now than he was four weeks ago. Well, we had Walter on last week, and here's what he had to say about what he termed Baby Joseph. Eight rounds, what do you know about him? Well, Baby Joseph, let me tell you something about Baby Joseph. He's got a, a, a massive amateur background. You know, he's a 10 times better fighter than Sonny Bill Williams, of course. You can see you can see it, I mean, only there, if you look at him. Uh, so, so I don't underestimate him at all. I, I, I see myself having a hard fight here. And, uh, you know, Buffalo's going to get him. I'm not going to take any chances. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to play around. I'm going to jump right on Baby Jesus when I'm going to take him out. This guy would be a promoter's dream, wouldn't he? He is a promoter's dream. <laughs> he, he's worked this fight from Bluff to North Cape. He talks to everybody. And I have to say, he was the kind of person I think you would get on quite well with you if you weren't in opposite camps at the moment. Oh, look, I'm sure that after the fight, I'll love to sit down and have a beer with Francois. Yeah. You know, he's a great guy. You know, he's a, he's a character in world boxing. But you do have question marks about his steroid use in the past. Uh, look, I, I was concerned the other day at the, um, at the drug you test when up, Francois right? came out and said, look, I've been using cortisone. Um, it waved a little bit of a red flag to me. Um, I really never had a say. I was never approached by Dean or Dave at the time uh, to give Francois permission to, to take cortisone uh, in the fight. Because it's used as a masking uh, device. It, well, it? It, it has been, yes. It all depends how you interpret it. But I mean, if, if, it's not, uh, if it's not put into the joint and if it's cycled, yes, it is used as a performance enhancer. Right. She had every reason to be. Yeah. And then there was another element this week that you came out. I spoke to you on radio about it, where Bortha has been offered by Lonergan and Higgins the chance to fight Tua. Right. And you thought, that's not on either. Well, it was sort of giving him added incentive, uh, yeah. which I sort of thought, you know, you guys are in our team. You know, let's all work together here. I don't, you know, I think this is a difficult enough fight for us without trying to offer both of <laughs> some more added incentive. Kevin, the state of boxing in the world, you live in Vegas, which is the mecca of boxing, and it is the centre, and that's where you've chosen to be. As you look at boxing, where is it at now? Well, I think, you know, boxing as a sport is still one of the great, uh, exciting entertainment sports of the world. When you look at the, the fights of Floyd Mayweather in the last couple of years, uh, Manny Pacquiao, the money that these guys generate. Mayweather's the highest paid sportsman in the world. Yep. Um, he's got a fight coming up in September this year against Cadello here. Alvarez. Pound for pound, the best in the world, oh, Kevin? Of course. Right. You know, he has right. been for a number of years. Right. You know, he's just signed a six-fight deal with Showtime, which guarantees him $33 million a fight. <laughs> uh, that's before he takes his TV money. And an, endorse, and an endorsement money. You know, it's phenomenal money that he fights for. So when you, when you look at that, you know, all the young boxers are all aspiring to be like Mayweather. So in Vegas, the centre of boxing, that's where you're based, it's where you've had your gym, and you've got a very interesting partner who you brought down here as well. Tell us about this guy. Well, my best friend in Las Vegas is a gentleman by the name of Rich Moriarty. And Rich, uh, Rich owns an investment banking company that's a global company. They have offices in New York, offices in Macau, and a big office in, in Vegas. And uh, Rich has been a supporter of mine for a number of years now. Um, has helped me with various fighters. He got involved uh, when I had Baby Shumanoff, the, the WBA World Light Heavyweight Champion. Uh, Rich travelled with me to Kazakhstan for a fight there. Um, it would have been an interesting it, experience. It, 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 it really was. Yeah. And uh, when I brought Joseph over, you know, when I started to talk to Rich that uh, we were putting this deal together where I was going to train Joseph Parker, this young boy from New Zealand, Rich set up a gym for me in Vegas, a, a private gym. Uh, this wasn't where I was going to train Joseph. I, was, I had another facility I was training him from, but Rich said, look, I, I want this facility here for you just in case you want to use it for Joseph. So, you know, Rich, is, uh, he's been a, been a great mate and a great supporter, and uh, he has sponsored Joseph in this fight. His company has just signed a, a five-figure deal with Joseph. 
um, which is, you know, for a fighter who's a 5-0 and o young prospect, it's massive to be involved with a global banking and investment company. Couldn't be better. Well, tomorrow night's a huge night for you, for Joseph, for everybody, and, uh, of course, for Sky. And there is how you go about being part of the action. Will Parker be good enough to take both her, or will the White Buffalo come through? Kevin, thank you for your time. My, uh, my pleasure, Murray. Having been to a lot of boxing recently, I used to be into it in a much bigger way. I went to see Joseph Parker simply because he was on this program recently and I liked him. But there was a time when I interviewed a lot of boxers and one that I will never forget for all sorts of reasons, many of which I can't tell you on nationwide television because of the language that was used before the interview, was with Jeff Fennick. Here's what happened. Jeff, Don King, what did you say to him after the bout? Because by Joe's, I remember how frustrated you were. Well, I told him to F off when he came near me, but um, I feel it's sad that people like that are involved in such a great sport. I mean, people love boxing, and I think the sooner we clean it up and clean the act of the entire sport up, and uh, from amateur level all the way to professional level, uh, you know, the better the sport will be. But like I said, it's it's such a sport with so much money and so many free trips around that um, it draws those uh, those bad people to it. Um, you know, when you look at you look at the sport, and you look at boxers. I mean, 99.9% .9 of boxers, maybe 100% of us come from come from the streets and come from nothing, and, um, and we're able to 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 get so much. You can become rich and famous and. Here are some of these other people, like the Don Kings and some of these people like the Arthur Tunstalls, who also see an opportunity to, to jump on our backs. Well, that was me in 1997, but two years ago, Joseph Parker came on this program and here's what we both look like. I was given a chance to go to, um, to India to compete in the, in the Commonwealth Championships and um, I was able to get a silver medal there. And then uh, not long after that, I went to um, Azerbaijan. That's somewhere in Russia. I've never ever heard of it. Yeah, I tell everyone, they just say that they didn't even know where it is. Right. Yeah, and I was able to get a bronze. And then uh, this was the recent one that we went to Singapore. Competed in the... Junior Olympics. Yeah, World Youth Olympics. Like short pants then, long pants now. I'm a bit better at dressing myself up now. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on the bout. You fought brilliantly. You must have been relieved. Was it a surprise for you? It was a surprise uh, when I knocked him out. Um, the plan in going into the fight was to box and box smartly and move around and be the big man from the outside. But <clears throat> when I uh, got him with that right hand, you know, it was, a, it was a shot that me and Kevin practiced for about you know, the, the time that I was in Vegas, eight weeks. And uh, when I landed in there, I was, I was really happy and I saw him stumble and I, I wanted to go for the kill. Well, you did. You, you, and I, you, yeah, I did. And you certainly went for the kill. There was no hanging back at all, was there? There was no hanging back at all. I uh, went full throttle ahead. Right. All right, well, as we play it, run me past what's going through your mind now. Um, I got him with the right hand and he went back and then I just saw him you know, go into defence mode. And I thought to myself, this is the chance for me to you know, have an early night. And uh, I was able to get, you know, the flurry of punches going. And then when I saw him fall down, um, yeah, he looked like he was in a bad state. Well, it was a real knockout. It was an absolute beaut. Before the fight, with all the talk, like I had him on this program, yeah. he was talking about baby Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know whether you know all of this, but he, he did that in other scenes as well. Yeah. Were you nervous before this fight? Um, I was, like I said, I, when I had a lot of interviews, I had no nerves coming to this fight and no worries just because of the preparation we had overseas, quality of our opponents that we were able to spar against, and just with all the running and, and boxing training that me and Kevin did, I came in with, uh, with confidence in my ability that I could uh, do well in this fight. See, you're smiling here. Were you totally relaxed? Yeah, I was, I was relaxed and it was, it was great having my, my cousin.